In the previous video, I talked about Ford's assembly line as well as Toyota's production system, which introduced ways to improve efficiency of car manufacturing. Now, in 1990s, this professor by name James Fee Womack, who wrote this book called as The Machine That Changed the World, brought these principles to the mainstream and that led to the lean production. A lot of organizations, including a lot of manufacturing companies, as well as later on, the IT industry, which was evolving at that point of time, started incorporating some of these principles and named it as the lean IT. And that was the beginning of lean IT. So it started with the TPS system, uh, then came the lean IT, the lean world. And uh, in 90s, or 1984, there was theory of constraint written by, uh, you know, Ellie Coldret, uh, which also had some influence over this is another management philosophy, which had influence over the way we did the manufacturing. And what Goldret uh, talks about in his famous book called as the goal is the theory of constraint, which is nothing but you identify the systems constraint, exploit those, elevate those, your you know, all your decisions should be around that and then repeat the process. I'll just show you, show, show that to you by example. Uh, let's say you have a manufacturing process which has five, um, you know, or six different work centers here, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And what you see on the blocks is the capacity. So 20 is the capacity for A versus uh, D has a capacity of eight. E has a capacity of 15. So you're, let's say you're you're manufacturing some widgets and uh, A produces or A processes widgets uh, at 20 at, at capacity. So what you, what comes out of that is 20 widgets versus when it comes out of C, it's 18. And then you see that bottleneck, right? So your manufacturing process is from left to right. And your first bottleneck here is D as a work center, which has a capacity of only eight. So even though, even I mean, no matter how much efficiency you could apply at A, B or C, it is not going to affect. So you will, at the end of the day, you're going to manufacture what comes out of that right hand side. That is five widgets right now. So applying your you know efficiency at uh, A, B and C is of no use unless you resolve the constraints that you have that are D and possibly F. And that's where you begin with. So all your decisions should be around this, resolving this constraint, elevate those constraints. And see, once you elevate those, well, let's say you change the capacity or increase the capacity for D immediately you will see the results and till like F you get like 15 and that's another constraint that you'll have to work around and once you do that you could get possibly you know so let's say uh, if you change it to 12 uh, your ultimate capacity or the efficiency or the throughput of this complete system throughput of your uh, plant increases to 12 from 5. And that's sort of a theory of constraint um, exemplified right here. And that also changed a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, increased the manufacturing for a lot of companies. And uh, in terms of IT companies, they started incorporating some of these practices, lean IT as well as theory of constraint. And what came out of that were the Kanban methodologies, Scrum practices that we still use today, uh, extreme programming or XP. There are systems like DSTM, uh, lean programming, or even feature-driven development, right? And what this all led to was Agile. So in 2001, all these practices, you know, were released in one single umbrella of Agile Manifesto. So Agile Manifesto is the one which incorporates most of these practices, which where you have some of the principles which are like individuals and interactions over the processes and tools. Uh, you make, you focus on working software, you know, and uh, you bring in the customer feedback, customer collaboration and uh, things like that. Right. So that's that's the beginning of Agile. Agile also brought the developers and QA together in one single engineering team. So you start writing the test right while you develop and you do the test driven development. And that's uh, that's the core core of uh, all of these uh, practices with the Agile uh, had a lot of, you know, um, effects in the way the IT efficiency, um, you know, um, sort of improved and uh, software development was Im influenced by the development here, right? So what led to the lead, uh, lean, man lean IT as well as Agile uh, improved the efficiency of building the software. Now that's where 
we started having you know the let's say releases every two weeks and or uh, let's say products built every two weeks however what agile manifesto completely forgot about what happens after the development is done and that's what brings us to our next video where we're going to talk about the friction between developers and operations and that's where the our devops journey really begins yeah.